Welcome to Bald Guy DIY. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can put your very own stamp on your next project. For a while now, I've had a desire to personalize the projects I make with my own stamp to, you know, put my logo on or any other saying that I might like to put on just as something to personalize it a little bit more. I had a local business reach out to me and ask if I could put their logo on a set of the Jenga that we made a while back. And so I tested that out and thought it'd be a great opportunity to show you how I developed a stamp making technique that's easy to use and does a great job over and over again. Let me show you. I used Tinkercad.com to model the template for the stamp and I uploaded an SVG version of the logo, which made it very simple then to use the pull and drag tools to size it properly and you know to decide where I wanted it to be. I used the logo as a whole instead of a solid shape and then grouped it with a solid rectangle in order to give me a stamp template. Now I used a five millimeter total thickness of the template and a three millimeter hole because I found that three millimeters of height was about perfect for using the stamp itself. And I sent it over to my 3D printer and printed off the stamp mold so that we could use it. Next, I created some proto putty according to the King of Random's recipe, which is basically 100% silicone. I used white in this case. Add a little bit of water for activation and then adding cornstarch until the stickiness is gone and it's easier to handle with your bare hands or with gloves if you prefer. It does take quite a bit of time. This took about five minutes overall. Gather up and work around, but I'm finding every time I do this, I get a little bit less on my hands and it works a little bit better. Now that the protoputty is finished, I begin working small pieces of it into the mold and making sure that it's going to fill every little crevice and cranny. Then it's simply a matter of squishing it out and flattening the top layer so that you have a nice flat surface. This is very important because when you go to stamp itself, if you don't have a flat surface, it's not going to be easy to get a nice consistent coverage out of a stamp. After it's had a chance to dry, I trim off the excess. and now demold the stamp surface. Convenient thing about making it this way is that the template itself acts as a great backing and so I'm going to use some CA glue and connect it to the stamped. Now you can see it's in the right exact orientation that you need so it's easy to tell where the design is going. I'm going to test it out on some paper here and you'll find that as you first start to use it you're not going to get great coverage of the ink, but the more times that you do it, the more you learn how to rock it correctly and also how to get full, nice, even coverage of the ink. On my third time through, you can see I finally got all the letters to come across nice and clear. Now it was time to test it on the Jenga piece. So I got really good coverage and then lined it up best I could and applied the logo. There it is, right on the wood, and it looks pretty cool. I also, of course, did Bold Guy DIY logos and tested those out as well. I was very happy with the result, especially again, once I've gotten a good ink coverage and learned exactly how to roll off the stamp in order to get a nice clear image. Even with text, it works great, as long as you make sure that you've got a good cast of your original mold, and then also learn how to roll it off in a, in a way that all of the letters are getting the right kind of coverage. If you have a trouble spot, you just do a little better extra rocking in that place, and it turns out great. So now you can see the method that I use to create my very own stamps out of a personalized logo or text. Now you could always do it differently. You could use a hobby crafting machine to cut a stamp or use a stamp making kit of some kind. But this is something that I found worked great for me and didn't cost very much money. If you don't have a 3D printer, as I tend to use it on almost every project somehow, you could always print out your models on a 3D printer at a library or makerspace or search around online for somebody that would do it for you. Remember, we keep putting out a new video every Saturday morning, so please check back to see more content coming your way. If you like the videos we're making, please consider subscribing. Tell your friends and family or any of the creative people in your life about our channel and leave us a comment below. Tell us what we could be doing to make it even better or ideas you have for projects we'd like to tackle in the future. 
Until next time, in all your DIY projects, I hope you put a stamp on yours. Don't be afraid to be bolder.